Hi, I'm David Zlutnik. And I'm Armando Aparicio. And we are the co-directors of the short film Mousetrap. A survey came out shortly before we made this film that found that a huge number of Disneyland workers were, were really suffering from like massive food insecurity and homelessness. And so we, we went down to Anaheim and uh, profiled several characters for this film. Don't even think about it. We shot this entire film in two and a half days, and that includes the interviews that we did that you'll see later in the film. It was a little broken up, but more or less we spent one full day with Artemis and one full day uh, with Rebecca. You know, we were getting there right as the park was beginning to open and people were pouring into the park and Artemis kind of walks out blurry eyed after her long night of working. And it was just like, okay, right, we're right into it. This is what these workers are experiencing day in, day out. Several thousand people there all day having fun and you can see the aftermath. And at the end of our day, the beginning of everybody else's, we walk out of there and the park is beautiful. This was very uh, uncomfortable because the first time we filmed with Rebecca was in the evening. Um, and so we basically left her and like went, you know, we went home and like slept in beds and stuff. And then like came back the next day to film with her again. Like, and she had spent the night in her car. You know, situations like that um, are somewhat uncomfortable as like for filmmakers. And it is a little bit difficult to try to manage those. I've been a cosmetologist for 10 years. I sacrifice my living because I cannot sacrifice my health care or my food or my transportation. It's pretty surreal to really see how much time they spend in transportation. You know, we interviewed several different Disneyland workers and everybody we spoke with had these stories of long commutes, whether that was they were living in Anaheim or people commuting from like two hours away. You know, that that's something that is just so telling about the way our economies exist now. People commuting from extremely far distances to work these service jobs. For 45 years, he was able to buy his house. He was able to have a family. I think he put a couple of his kids through college. He was able to have an American middle-class life working as a custodian. If you've got a global corporation like the Disney Corporation that last year made $9 billion in profits, and they've got 11% of their employees at Disneyland who've been homeless. When we were getting these shots here of people coming in and out of the park. This is, the this is sort of our one of our first experiences with how much the city the goes out of its way to work with Disneyland. You know, we're we're out here on a public sidewalk, and um, I don't know how long were we there for? Five minutes before a uniformed Anaheim police officer walks up to us with two Disneyland security guards and starts asking us what we're doing, who we're shooting for, what we're there for. Uh, telling us exactly where the line is that we cannot cross. There have been a couple of times where I've had emergencies where I just, I couldn't buy any food. So there were times when I got down to just plain spaghetti. Her living situation was very intense. She had so many roommates. Just trying to carve out a space to do the interview, we were like throwing, you know, piling bikes on top of each other to just have enough room to set up the cameras and get enough space to to shoot with her. I spend $730 for It's an interesting little shot of her watering these plants, but it also just shows that, you know, they're growing food in their apartment, partially as a way of substituting for not being able to purchase as much as they'd like. Food and then utilities. And after that, whatever's left usually goes to things like shampoo and toilet paper and toothpaste and occasionally a candy bar. The juxtaposition between, you know, following Rebecca and Artemis and then so going to Beverly Hills uh, so and seeing where she works her second job right was here. also pretty stark. And just uh, imagine, like to, imagine having to do that every day of waking up in your car and, and putting yourself together in a Starbucks bathroom and then so driving to Beverly Hills to go to work is pretty insane. Months, yeah, it's just, it's, it's very interesting to see it. It almost looks like a you know, like a fashion so shoot or something with the lighting and, and just difficult. like her accessories and um, her wardrobe and exactly like her makeup and stuff. I gave up a roof over my head instead of 
my health benefits. Disney is perceived by the Orange County community as a very good neighbor. One of the hardest things about making films and doing the journalism is really having to talk to like all sides, you know, even when you, you know, you have a, you have your own opinion about everything. You know, we really tried to speak with Disney on the record. We had, I don't know how many phone calls with them and they referred us to, to this woman as a, a representative of business in Orange County. County issue. The high paying jobs are what it takes to live in this county. I think David edited this this particular it interview uh, um, and just was able to give like a, an awkward feel to the like mood um, without making it feel too tense or negative. Or they'll have to double and triple up in existing housing, presuming they can even find a place to live. For low wage workers, this is not an environment for them to thrive. When we called the city council office to make sure it would be fine for us to shoot inside the meeting, they already knew who we were and Disney had already called them and told them that we would be attending. They sent the Anaheim Chamber of Commerce representative up to us as well. I thought it was almost scary that he, he kind of came up to us and was like, I've seen your website, you know, I've checked you guys out. It really was like, we did get this feeling the whole time we were filming in there, like we were being stalked through the city of Anaheim. Like there were constantly people watching us, people waiting for us, people knew like where we were gonna be and where we had been. Um, and, and we really did get that vibe just the whole time through, through the filming. Yeah, and even though I never got Disney to actually sit down with us and speak with us or even issue a statement when, you know, I was talking with them on the phone, you know, they kept saying, like, I don't get why you're making a film about us. Like, we're just one company operating here. There's diners down the street that pay their people the same amount. And it's like, well, those diners didn't pull in $69 billion in revenue last year. We had 5,000 people respond to the survey. That's almost 30% of the entire uh, unionized workforce. To put it in some context, if you were going to do a, a national survey of the entire United States, you'd have to survey roughly 100 million people to get uh, the same response rate that we got. That was such a great soundbite. It's so hard to get people to say what you need them to say in interviews sometimes. And just being able to really put that into like a national perspective, um, as far as like the accuracy of the survey, really just like silences um, any sort of like opposition to, to the issue. Yeah, and they keep objecting to the study, but they haven't actually said any of the findings were false. And I kept putting that to them when I was talking to Disney, trying to get, get them to sit down with us is, you know, what part of this do you object to? What is wrong about any of this report? that's been coming out, and we never did get any actual refutation of any of the facts. It's the in-between time of nothing to do. In-between time of literally just hanging out in your car. <laughs> this scene where she pulls into the bathroom kind of happened by accident. You know, we were driving around with her in the neighborhoods that she often parks to sleep, and she's just like, I got to go to the bathroom. And, you know, it just sort of presented this very real challenge that she has to deal with every night is how does she meet her basic needs. I honestly couldn't imagine spending that much time in my car. Um, and on top of that, just never having a place to, you know, take a break from that just really seems so intense like a bush over there, you know, in front of the house where I'm not gonna disturb anybody. Um, and also, of course, I take a look at the neighborhood and, you know, what the safety is of it here. So this is actually, um, this is my favorite scene of the film. I really wanted to capture like the grittiness of of the lifestyle um, that she was living, you know, even as just a, a night custodian. Um, and you can just really see the utter exhaustion um, on her face as she's, you know, heading into a night shift. It's gonna be all night. And, you know, this is again, this is the same day from like when we met her in the morning and I interviewed her and we went to city council with her. And then in the end, you know, she's, she's here going right back to work. I've seen how many people tend to burn out quickly, who can't stay awake or never adjust to the shift.
It takes me about an hour and 15 minutes to an hour and a half because there's a 40 minute gap in between the buses. This really did just take forever. We were just sitting there with her. You know, it took so long for the the second bus to show up, but we really wanted to capture the reality of her like three mile commute, three mile, almost hour and a half commute to work every day. Getting a second job. This is a great example of the bare limit, the like exact limits of how far we're allowed to step onto like the property. And luckily for us, you know, Disneyland helped us out by giving us a fireworks display to end this sequence on. They yeah. wouldn't give us an interview, but they gave us fireworks. We were hired on to make this film. Uh, we had it greenlit by a major national media outlet. Um, and Disney got it killed, uh, got the whole project killed shortly after we finished shooting it. We were so upset, we thought it was like, uh, almost like a protest move to, to make sure that it got seen in the end uh, and that Disney did not get away with, with killing it. Layton, or the executive producer, spent close to six months just shopping it around at uh, several different places. And we came up on this opportunity with LA Taco, which is just a, a very small local outlet. And this film did, I mean, surprisingly well with them, which was, you know, really rewarding for us. This film is, I guess, a couple of years old now, but it's still one of my favorites that we've worked on, I think. Um, it really is uh, emblematic of the type of films that we want to make.